Welcome to FrameForge Previous Studio 3. In this section, we'll be talking about the main interface, which we call the control room. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a top-down blueprint view, which always shows the view of the set from a bird's-eye perspective. To the right of that are from between two and eight monitors. And these are views through all the cameras on the set, whether they're floating cameras, which is what the core version has, or if they are physical cameras, which are available in the Pro and Stereo editions. Regardless, they're all shown as monitors across the top. If you have more cameras than monitors, then the scroll buttons will become active and you can scroll through them. You can also reorder them simply by dragging and dropping. Along the left-hand side of the control room are controls for objects to spin, move, elevate, tilt, and scale them. These are multifunction controls, and we'll go into them in greater detail in the section about manipulating objects. Below, and just a bit to the right, is a status field area that show you the current focal length, angle of view, and camera height of the currently selected camera. Since we are looking through a blueprint view, right now it's the camera whose angle of view is currently live, which is represented by the gray triangle shown in the blueprint view. Beneath the live view are the camera controls, which are labeled in very filmmaker-friendly terms roll, pan, tilt, zoom, dolly, crane. The f-stop is only optional and we'll get into that more later. Because we're in a blueprint view, we also have two additional controls which are magnify and scroll which allow us to manipulate what is shown within the blueprint view itself. Continuing on to the right, we have two rectangles which are the shot insertion area and uh, when you have stored shots, these will show grayscale representations of those shots with uh, either an append frame or an insertion point so that you can either replace existing frames, insert them in the middle, or append them to the end. Above that is the object library. You'll notice that there are five tabs at the very top. The object library is where all the objects that you drag onto a set come from, and they're broken up into two basic categories, actors and props. And if we switch from actors to props, you will see the sort of thing. We have camera equipment, which is available only in the pro and stereo editions, but everything else is pretty much available in all editions, doors, architectural features, bedroom features, and so on. There's a search edit field at the very top of the object library that is available if you have either actors or props selected. It doesn't matter which of the two you have. If I type in man and then bike, it will find all the man's bikes, even though I am in the actors tab. The remaining three tabs are for controlling the lighting on the set, for selecting objects from a list, and for displaying true optically accurate depth of field. Since each of these are not complicated but powerful, we will cover them in their own sections. That pretty much wraps it up for the control room, and we hope you'll continue and watch some of the other videos that get into greater detail.